Hey, welcome to Silver River Center for Chair Caning. I'm Brandy. And I'm Dave. We started our chair caning journey about 15 years ago. First doing restorations on the side at our house. And then we got a studio about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that was great to hone our skills. Uh, we realized that having those skills was one thing, passing them along to others was very important. So we reinvented ourselves, got into a bigger space in order to teach. We've been having um, a great time teaching people from all over the US and Canada even, three from Canada, um, people coming up for our boot camp, and then we've had a lot of people coming from around the region for day-long sessions or two-day-long sessions. So I learned uh, back in 2005 from my Aunt Linda. She learned from her uncle and her dad, although her mother was uh, the main chair caner in the family, Grandma Ida. And she learned from her mom. It could go way past that, but we just aren't sure. So everybody was in Charlottesville, Virginia. So we're not only passing along a family tradition, but also an Appalachian tradition, as well as an ancient and global craft. The more we learned about these chairs as we worked on them, the more we wanted to pass that information along. And everybody was honestly kind of fascinated by it, which you know, I thought I was the only one chair nerd that was super dorky about being fascinated about chair history. But we just kept getting really good responses from people. And so we were inspired to create um, not only a school, but also a kind of a mini museum, a teaching collection. Absolutely. The more you know about anything, the more you can appreciate it. It's 2020, y'all. Um, so we closed down on March 17th, just like a lot of people, and we've been hesitant to reopen. Um, we do have a large space, but it's just been kind of, you know, you have to do that pandemic pivot. We've been currently, and for a while now, been working on filming online tutorials, and this is our new, or the latest iteration of our filming studio that we're filming in today. Um, we feel like we can reach so many more people and even at a better cost. Um, it is taking a little while to get these videos down, but um, this is our, our studio. At this point in 2020, we really want to focus on the education. And while it's unfortunate that we can't have the public in our shop quite yet, um, it's also exciting that we're going to be able to reach people from all over the world. And anytime they want to, we can be on holiday and they can take these classes and take these virtual tours of our museum. So we'll be seeing you guys in the virtual world for some really cool chair classes. Absolutely. So shall we go on a tour? Let's do it. All right. First up on the chair wall, the natural rush and then paper rush process is the same. You have these triangles that come together into the middle. The only difference is the material itself. The natural rush originally would have been hand twisted with materials that you had available. Around here would have been cattails. Um, in other areas it could be bull rush. Um, we've also seen like this chair, this beautiful mace chair, locally sourced corn husks. These are fantastic. They're 100 year seats. Paper rush is something that we see quite often now, although it's only really been around mm, for about 100 years or so. And you have a lot more uniformity, maybe not quite as much character as some of the more natural material. Now a little different process, but another cord is going to be the Danish cord. Three ply paper cord um, makes for a wonderful seat and the last big innovation or one of the last big innovations where it's a single panel. I'm and sorry I'm focused on the cat the feet. Cat Can feet. you turn it over again? <laughs> We're gonna have to roll with that because that's pretty pricey. Yeah. I found these great kitten socks at a, um, at a cat museum here in <laughs> in Western North Carolina. Continue on about the nails now. So you have not only the Danish cord, but there's these L-shaped Danish nails. And kind of those two materials combined, uh, along with the weaving process, it gives the Danish cord seats a really unique look and a really unique feel. 
Authentic bark is really cool stuff to weave. We probably only do a few chairs a year with it, but there are some chair makers that use it exclusively on their woven chair seats. Definitely an Appalachian tradition. Um, the hickory bark comes in these beautiful coils. It has to be shaved down. It's really labor intensive to weave. So what's most commonly seen, um, even I would say in rural Appalachia, would be this splint reed chair. This is the inside of the rattan palm, and we'll visit that in a minute. But it has a lot of variations too. This guy here is a manufactured paper, and it looks so much like the hickory bark. It's kind of crazy, a lot of people mistake it for that. White oak splits are one of the most Appalachian of the Appalachian traditions. This chair is called the Shenandoah chair. It was native to the Shenandoah Valley. And while it is uh, kind of a simple rustic looking chair, it actually has some pretty impressive design elements. You can see these, uh, the tapering here and this curved back, not only there, but here, it's a very supportive chair frame and extremely well designed. It's got some lovely little turnings on the posts as well. Shaker tape is woven cotton strapping available in a variety of colors and a couple of different widths. Uh, this is a fantastic, comfortable seat. The checkerboard pattern is really strong and simple to weave. So if you're a nervous beginner, this is a great place to start. This is what people really love to see whenever we're out and about in public. It's really intricate, but it really is a methodical process. You can completely get lost in it. You can also get really frustrated with it. What you're weaving is two vertical strands, two horizontal strands, and two directions of diagonals. And the material that we're using is the rattan palm. It has holes drilled into the seat frame and the cane is looped around from hole to hole to create a really solid base of support. The last chair on our chair wall is pressed cane. Um, pressed cane refers to a pre-woven cane webbing that's soaked and then pressed into a groove. So this chair back has a groove running around the panel. The cane is pressed into the groove and then cut off on the opposite edge and then a, a spline is inserted into that groove. Let's take a look at some other chairs. This lovely little nugget of Asheville history came from the original S&W cafeteria. Gorgeous 1920s green paint, uh, these lovely little spindles. And you can see the chair has been upholstered at some point, but it, it was originally caned. Next up in our Western North Carolina history platform here is a Woody's chair. This was made by Arville Woody. He passed away several years ago um, they are seventh generation chair makers at this point. They just had an exhibit up at the Tow River Arts Council, 200 years of Woody's chairs. It is a fantastic shop. You've got to include it on your list next time you are up in Spruce Pine. This rocking chair was donated to our museum by Scott Woody. It is a Shadrick Mace rocker. It's got these beautiful sculpted arms and this kind of bumpy turning on the front post is indicative of a mace chair. You can also see a lot of hand carved details here where the arm joins into the back post and kind of subtly right here, the sculpted back. The seat is woven with a twisted seagrass. We've seen a lot of the seagrass material on mace chairs. In fact, there's a church up in Canton, North Carolina that has over 80 mace chairs. The pastor was so kind, she donated a couple of chairs to us. This is a twisted corn shuck seat. You can see a little bit more clearly the sculpted hand carved back. We have a lot of chairs in here on loan from Aramont School of Arts and Crafts in Gatlinburg. This lovely metal and corn shuck chair is kind of a contemporary twist on corn shuck weaving. It was woven likely low in the mid 20th century. 
I'm trying to do some repairs here on broken pieces. So we've taken a tour around some completed chairs and some in need of repair. But let's talk about the process that is involved. This is the first step in our fiber rush process exhibit. Most chairs are wider on the front than they are in the back, which means you have a gusset area that needs to be filled in before you can start incorporating all four posts. The next step, once the gusset is filled in, is you do start incorporating all four posts. And this particular pattern works from the edges into the center. About halfway or a little over halfway through the weaving process, you're going to want to stuff your seat with cardboard. Most chairs are wider than they are deep, so your side rails fill up before your front and back rails. That leaves this open area that is the bridge between the two. At this point, you're just weaving from front to back rail and making this bridge from one side to the other. The last step that we like to do is to put a shellac coat on. This gives you some protection from stains as well as wear and tear. This is our new process exhibit that's showing from no seat at all to a completed seat with a shellac coat where you're starting out with the warp wrapping your material from front rail to back rail around. Then you have the weft where you're actually weaving the material through. This we're using a three by three herringbone pattern and it gives you these stair steps. Because the front rail is wider than the back, that you do have this area on the edge that will have to be filled in afterwards. And the final step, similar to the rush, is that we put a shellac coat on. Thanks for visiting us in our shop, y'all. We hope to see you in the future um, at Silver River Center for Chair Caning in the River Arts District. Uh, look out for us online at www.silverriverchairs.com. On Facebook at Silver River Center for Chair Caning or on Instagram as Silver River Chairs. Hashtag chair nerd.